Welcome to Tommy Jenkins Studies in God's Word. It is our prayer that you will be encouraged in Christ as you listen. For more podcasts, visit our YouTube channel or our website at mobergeron.com. Greetings. For this devotional, we are going to consider two very different men at the crucifixion of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. One is a Jewish criminal and the other a Roman officer, a Gentile. Open God's word to Luke 23, 41 to 43 and verses 46 and 47. Our passage reads, We are punished justly, for we are receiving what our actions deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Verses 46 to 47. Then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had happened, he gave glory to God, saying, Surely this was a righteous man. Verses 42 and 43 recounts the poignant moment of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, where one of the criminals hanging beside him acknowledges Jesus' innocence and kingdom, pleading, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus' response to him is one of grace and promise. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This interaction highlights the mercy and salvation that Jesus offers to those who turn to him in faith, even in their final moments. In verses 46 to 47, after Jesus had breathed his last, the centurion overseeing the crucifixion, having witnessed the manner of Jesus' death, declared, Surely this man was righteous. This statement from a Roman officer, a Gentile, underscores the impact of Jesus' death on those who witnessed it, revealing a recognition of Jesus' innocence and his divine identity. Both verses share a common theme of recognition and acknowledgement of Jesus' identity and righteousness at the moment of his crucifixion. They are moments of revelation to unlikely recipients, a condemned criminal and a Roman centurion, both of whom, from their distinct perspectives, see and confess truth about Jesus. The criminal recognizes Jesus as king and entrusts his future to him, while the centurion acknowledges Jesus' righteousness, a testament to his innocence and divine mission. These passages together highlight the universal scope of Jesus' mission and the broad invitation of the gospel. They show that the recognition of Jesus' identity and the salvation he offers can come to anyone, irrespective of their past actions or societal status. The criminal, guilty under the law, and the centurion, a representative of the Roman Empire that condemned Jesus, both find themselves at the foot of the cross in a posture of acknowledgement that Jesus is who he claims to be. Furthermore, both verses illuminate the nature and nature of Jesus' kingdom. It is not one that comes with earthly power or political dominion, but one that is established through suffering, sacrifice, and righteousness. Jesus' assurance of paradise to the criminal and his demonstration of righteousness to the centurion reveal the kingdom of God as a realm of grace, mercy, and truth, accessible to all who recognize Jesus as Lord. These moments of recognition are profound because they occur at the climax of Jesus' earthly ministry, his crucifixion, underscoring the power of the cross to reveal truth to humanity. They are vignettes of grace, showing that the message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, transcends all human barriers, offering hope and redemption to all who believe, from the least to the greatest among us. In reflecting upon these verses, you are invited to consider your own response to Jesus Christ. Do you see him as the criminal and the centurion did, as king, savior, and the righteous one? And lastly, do you see yourself in need of this savior? Through these passages, we are challenged to acknowledge Jesus in all aspects of our lives, recognizing his lordship and the transformative power of his grace and salvation. Open now to John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. Listen and weigh these words carefully and prayerfully. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, then because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. 
May you call upon Jesus this hour. Visit MoBergeron.com for additional free resources.